This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, it's the first lecture under Power Distribution Design, and it's the basic systems of delivery. So we'll begin the Power Distribution Design portion of this course, <clears throat> and this is the very first lecture under that, and it's dealing with delivery systems. So we want to start our discussion with examining how electrical power is delivered to our facility. In the United States, this, is, this generally comes from the local power utility company. There are four major aspects of the utility company delivery system that uh, you should be aware of. And these are generation, transmission, distribution, and service drop or service entrance. While we are primarily concerned with the last aspect, service drop uh, entrance, you do need to be familiar with the total delivery system as there are times that this can affect your project in one way or another. So let's take a quick look at each of these aspects now and then we'll focus a little bit more on that final one, the service drop uh, or service entrance. So it's the first, uh, first aspect that we looked at was generation. So electricity can be generated several different ways by the utility company, and this includes uh, using generators such as diesel, gas, or coal-fired generators, uh, nuclear power plant, uh, solar voltaics, uh, or wind turbines. And finally, we could use hydro turbines for dams. So here in Tennessee, where I live, we do quite a bit of this with TVA. Uh, that's what they do. So some of these sources may be used on site for local alternate or backup power as well. Uh, primarily uh, generators and solar is a, is a big one these days. So we'll look at some of these alternate sources later. But for now, we will just consider the main source, which is from the utility company. So next we want to look at transmission. So in this process, the power is stepped up in voltage from the generation from the generating station through a switch yard. And this generally is in the range of 69 kilovolts to around 765 kilovolts in the United States. Can be higher, uh, especially coming out of Canada. They can get up in the megavolt range. But this is to allow for the transmission of the of the power for long distances. So at these voltages, they can literally go for thousands of miles uh, to get to their local distribution companies. And so switch yard, this is a picture of what a typical switch yard looks like. Um, the structure here, these are actually big circuit breakers. They're usually filled with SF6 gas, which is an insulating gas. And um, and then you have different uh, transformers and switching uh, gear and bus bars and all that type of thing. And then they usually go over these big power lines. So when you see the big guys like that, that's your transmission lines. Uh, that, that's for running, like I said, thousands of miles at a time uh, using those methods. So next on the list is distribution. So at the distribution substations, the voltage now is stepped down. You know, in the 69 to 765 kilovolt range, that's, that's pretty high, and that's, that's too high to run locally, like around town. So we will step it down at the distribution substation to around anywhere from 4 kilovolts to typically 34 kilovolts um, for the localized area. So there should be some awareness as to the location of this system, uh, the, the extent of this system for our projects. Especially if we're going to require large uh, electrical load power here that, that needs to be supplied because uh, if, if the power uh, infrastructure is not close enough to our site, uh, then the utility company may charge us to extend it to our site. So you, know, you might need to interface with the local power company in these cases. So this is where you know the cross arm, the typical wood cross arm poles that we see here. Uh, come into play and so this is what uh, a lot of this look like and so you can see we have the glass insulators here uh, some people like my wife collect these but um, uh, you a lot of times can tell what the voltage is I know many power companies in general uh, 
uh, when they use these stacked glass insulators, it's usually five kilovolts per insulator. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five. So five times five is 25 kilovolts. So I would say this is probably a 24 kV line. Uh, whereas with the single glass, um, it could be as low as 4 kV. I don't think that's a hard, hard rule, but I think it's just a general rule of thumb when you're looking at power lines. Finally, we come to the service drop or the service entrance. So this is where, uh, you know, we'll have the most interest in, in our system. So this is technically where the utility company stops and the client takes ownership. So the official demarcation point is where the power meter is located. So this is important. Everything past the meter is the responsibility of the client and their design team. Everything before the meter, utility company takes care of. So, you know, this is, this is important that we understand where this is and that the client understands that. So there are technically two forms of metering here then. And these are secondary metering. So this is the most common on commercial buildings. And so this is where the meter uh, is located past the utility company transformer. That being the case, the utility company then is responsible for the transformer serving our building. So if something happens to that transformer, they're responsible for fixing it or servicing it. The other is primary metering. So this is typically reserved for large or industrial clients. So in this case, we do the metering on the primary side of the utility transformer. That being the case, the client will likely be responsible for that transformer. They'll need to purchase it. They'll be responsible for it if it breaks down. And, and they supply it. So there are technically two forms of metering, with, like we've mentioned before, secondary metering, which is the most common on commercial buildings. So this can be done in a couple of different ways. We'll just stop and look at this. So the first is direct metering, and this usually occurs for anything that's 400 amps or less. So in this case, this is like on the back of a strip mall, you would see these, these are direct meters. So they're just running the services to each of the spaces directly to the meters and then straight to our panels. Anything over 400 amps is usually metered with a CT or current transformer like we talked about in the review section. So in this case, you will see usually a CT cabinet. That's what we call this uh, cabinet here. And it usually has a smaller conduit that goes over to our meter base. So uh, we run our service through the CT cabinet and then to our switchboard. So in this case, the utility company usually has guidelines saying what kind of cabinet they want set there. Then they come and put the CTs in here and the electrician runs the wires through those. The second, what we mentioned, was primary metering. Like we said, typically reserved for larger or industrial clients. So just to give you an idea of what these look like, here's a technical drawing of a primary meter. And uh, here's what they look like on the pole. They're usually pole mounted, uh, you know, where the primary or high voltage lines or medium voltage lines are. So if you see something like this, it has these ribbed uh, connection points here. That's what this is it usually is a primary meter. So it's used for metering on the primary side. <clears throat> so it's kind of a good idea to be familiar with some of the possible voltage. So this is a, a nominal system voltage table. This comes from the IEEE Red Book. And so you can see here, um, they classify low voltage as anything below 600 volts. And so the National Electrical Code also uh, uh, recognizes that designation as low voltage. It's going to be a little bit confusing because you can also have low voltage systems, which we'll talk about later with like your fire alarm, your telecom system and stuff like that. So there is kind of a dual meaning there. We just have to be careful with, but for the purposes of right now, low voltage is just anything below 600 volts down to 120 volts. And again, these are the standard voltages from utility companies. If we get into our distribution range, that's our medium voltages. And you can see here, you could have anything from 2,400 volts up to 69,000 volts. So anything in this range uh, is considered medium voltage. And, you know, some power companies, you know, each utility company uh, designates their own voltage. So you could have 13.2. I've worked on those. 13.8. I've worked on systems that have that. I've worked on systems that were 34.5. 
I've even worked on some systems that were 4160. Uh, some outliers in, you know, some rural co-ops or something like that, they may have some off-the-wall voltages that you might see, 4,000, 6,600, 14.4. I've actually seen a 14.4 system. So these are the, the standard voltages there. So then we can go to the high voltages and the ultra high voltages. Again, these are usually reserved for transmission, but uh, these are the standard voltages that they usually use so that they can interconnect with other, other uh, utility company systems, uh, anywhere from 115 kV to 1.1 uh, megavolt systems. So uh, it just gives you an idea of where, where some of the voltage ranges are and what, what numbers you might see. So if we were to look at the system as a whole, this is kind of what it looks like, just to give you an idea. So we will have our, our generation station. This is where the power is generated. It's generally in the range of 11,000 to 25,000 volts. Uh, we come out to a switch yard where they step the voltage up and then get up into these uh, transmission substation. That's where we get to the 69 to 765,000 volts uh, transmitted transmit it the, the long distance until we get the local distribution. They step it down 4160 to 34 kV. Uh, and at this point, you can have two different things. You could have, have industrial loads. So sometimes they'll deliver just the distribution voltage straight to the industrial plants. And then uh, they'll have their own substations and, and uh, step it down themselves. Sometimes they even run it through their plants because their plants are so large at the higher voltages and then step them down to strategic locations. But otherwise, it's stepped down to the, the voltages that we're accustomed to, the 40, the 480 or the 12208, and then you can have the, for residential, 12240. So now that we've examined how power is uh, created and transmitted to our building site, it seems appropriate now that we need to take a quick look at the basic forms of delivery that this electrical power can take uh, for our buildings. So the fundamental defining criteria for any electrical service is the delivery voltage, as in the value and phase of the service. So the form of the electrical service to a building can have an impact on various decisions in the design, design process. So the ultimate decision as to what type of electrical service will be provided lies with the local electrical utility company. They'll typically make their decision based on what is readily available at the new building location and also what the expected load is for the new building. So, you know, if you have a very small building with not much load and you go and ask them for a 480 volt system, they're likely not to give it to you. They usually want to reserve that only for larger loads. Uh, so, you know, you got to be careful with that and be, be cognizant of, of how much load you do have. So in the United States, for almost all commercial facilities, there are four fundamental delivery systems and that we'll discuss here. So the first one we want to talk about is just the single phase 12240 volt system. So this is the simplest and smallest service that can be expected to be delivered from any utility company. For very small commercial buildings with little or no motor loads, uh, depending on the location, the electrical service will many times just be a 12240 volt single phase system. This is also the delivery voltage for almost all residences as well. So in this type of service, there are two phase conductors delivered from a single transformer. And you look at that on the next slide. Um, and this will supply a voltage from phase to phase of 240 volts. And so many times this is how this type of service is delivered. Uh, just be a single pole mount transformer. Uh, and here's some of the things uh, you might run into. We don't want to go too much into that it's beyond the scope of this course, but you know, you have a disconnect switch, a lightning arrestor, uh, you know, your rib insulators, your hot clamp. So it's just some of the terminology associated with that. So in this single phase 12240 volt system, a neutral is also delivered along with the two phase conductors that is from the center tap of the single service transformer. So this conductor will have a potential difference of 120 volts between each phase conductor uh, as shown below. So here, if you look at this diagram, you know, here's our two phase conductors on top and bottom. So believe, between them is 240 volts. Then there'll be a center tap off the transformer for our neutral, and that's where we get our 120 volts. So 120 volts is what's uh, 
at each of the electrical outlets in your house. You know, so when you go to plug in a, a light or a lamp or a vacuum cleaner, that's the voltage that the, those will see. Now, if you plug your dryer in or you have an oven, they connect between the phase conductors, and that's where you get the 240 volts. So naturally, uh, receptacles and another 120 volt loads will be connected then between the neutral and the phase conductor. Lighting is also typically 120 volts. And again, larger loads such as your HVAC equipment, uh, cooktops, clothes dryers, they're going to be connected between uh, the two phase conductors. One thing to, to note here is, and we'll talk about this more in panel schedule. Uh, construction later in the course, but when adding these 120 volt loads, it is important to try to equally distribute the loads on each side of the neutral so as not to load one side of the coil uh, more than the other. In the ideal case where the loads are balanced, there should be no current flowing in the neutral because they'll cancel each other out. So as we look at this diagram, you know, if we have uh, an 8 kVA load, which is, would be like your electric clothes dryer. Of course, that goes between the phases. But then if we have some receptacle loads, we want to try to distribute them evenly between these two uh, phases in neutral. What we don't want to do is try is load them all on one side. That way we overload coil A uh, much more than B. And that's, uh, that's not a good condition for the transformer. It doesn't much like that. So again, it's, it's considered poor design. Uh, and or installation because electrician can, can adjust this as well in the panel but uh, it's considered poor design and installation to have all loads on one phase or too many loads on one phase of this type of service so we have to be careful again to and that, that's that's part of the responsibility of the designer to try to, to equal this out the next service we're going to look at uh, is really not that common, especially in new services for new buildings. You almost will never see this anymore, but because they still exist, uh, we do want to look at it. This is an older type of service uh, entrance configuration that can still be found today on existing buildings, but it's rarely used. And that's the 12243 phase. Now, we just looked at the 12240 single phase, but this is a three phase. And so what's significant about this is this is a delta connected system. So this type of service can be delivered with either two open delta or three closed delta transformers connected in a delta configuration. And so here's a pole mount example of the two or open delta configuration. And so how we can tell uh, when we have a delta, we can usually tell just by observation pretty quickly. When we look up at the pole, you see how there's three terminals here. And if there's a wire coming off that middle terminal, then you can almost bet you have a delta if there's two or three transformers. If there's just one transformer, then of course you have a single phase. But if there's more than one transformer and one of them has a conductor connected from the middle terminal, then that's going to be your delta uh, indicator. So in this case, we have three phase conductors uh, and, and that are used to give us this 240 volts between each phase. But uh, one of these transformers, since it's sitter tapped, that'll give us our 120 volts. And so this is important, and we need to look at this. And so let's look at a diagram on the next page. So here, this neutral conductor has a potential difference of 120 volts with each of the phase conductors that come off that center tapped transformer only. The potential difference between the neutral conductor and the remaining phase conductors is not 120 volts, but 208 volts. So here, if we look at this, that, remember that transformer had the center terminal. This is what this uh, transformer looks like. So we have our two phases and the center tap comes off. So in this case, we've got 240 volts between the phase and 120 volts between the, that neutral and those two phase conductors. And we have this other phase conductor here, the neutral to that phase conductor is not 120 volts, but it's 208 volts. And so this is this can be the problem. We have to be careful. Now this is a three transformer delta, so it's a closed delta. Uh, the fact is you could actually take away either of these transformers here, just delete them, and this would still function as a delta connection. You don't have to have the third transformer. It just gives you a little more power output if you do have it. So going back to uh, the phase conductor, so 
the phase conductor that is not 120 volts to neutral. That's this top one, it's 208 volts to neutral. This has many different names, uh, depending on you know what electrician you're talking to and probably which part of the country you're in. I know where I grew up and where I worked, this was referred to as a high leg. Some electricians call it a wild leg. Other electricians call it a stinger. Uh, whatever you want to call it, though, this is this is probably one of the most misunderstood service uh, connections out there, and so a lot of designers and electricians have trouble with this. Um, the reason being is, you know, they they realize they think any single phase breaker I put in here will work. Well, if you put a single phase breaker on this phase B, uh, you likely could damage something. I know uh, I did a project years and years and years ago that was supposed to be 12208 and so we wired it up as a bank and when the power company came the guy I guess misread his order and he hooked it up as a delta instead of a y and we had a lot of lights on this phase here that was supposed to be 120 instead of 208 and when he turned the power on it blew all the bulbs out so you have to be careful with that you know working with the in case you run across a 12240 delta like I said, you don't see them much anymore. You might run into them on some older buildings, but uh, for the most part, uh, you probably won't see them, especially on new construction. So the next service uh, we want to look at is probably one of the more common, especially in commercial uh, building design. Uh, it's in use all over the place today, especially on small to mid-sized projects. This is the 12208 volt Y connection, not delta, but Y. And so it's very similar to the previous delivery voltage scenario and that it has three phases and we this time we have to have three transformers you can't do it with just two like the delta uh, and but in this time in this case though instead of having 240 volts between the phases we're going to have 208 volts between the phases so the difference is that unlike the delta service though the voltage between each phase conductor and the neutral here uh, is the same all the way around it's 120 volts so the neutral linear is derived from a common connection between the transformers. Therefore, there is no high leg. We don't have to center tap any transformers in this case. And so let's look at that, what this looks like in a wiring diagram. So here you see we have three transformers as before, but instead of a triangle shaped, they're connected in a Y shape. And so we have this one common connection between all three. That's our neutral. So between this and each of the phases, we, if we were to use a voltmeter, we would get 120 volts. Between each phase to phase, we're going to get 208 volts. So uh, this is a much better understood uh, voltage uh, service configuration. And, you know, there's no danger. There's no high leg. So there's nothing uh, that could give us any problems with that. So this service can be delivered a couple of different ways. It can be done using three pole mounted transformers. But more often these days, the service is delivered underground through a pad mount transformer uh, to a main distribution switch gear. So, you know, looking at that, uh, here we have three pole mounted transformers. You can see in this case, there's no, there's not even a third terminal to connect to. So we're pretty, we can be pretty uh, sure that this is not a delta. Uh, it'll be a Y connection, and uh, you, know, you'll, you might see this quite a bit if it's a, a pole mounted uh, service entrance. But more often than not, you're going to see a pad mounted transformer. So here they just come with the uh, medium voltage lines, go straight underground and come up into this guy and then come back out and go into our building with 12208 three phase. Um, just a side note, if you do see a pad mount transformer again, you can almost always uh, you know, rest assured you have a Y service to your building because I don't think you can get a Delta service in a pad mount configuration. So as we've seen before, the receptacles will be connected between the neutral and phase conductors in this case. Also, the lighting is typically uh, fed with 120 volts in this, in this scenario. Uh, with the possible exception of parking lot or site lighting, you might use the higher voltage there. So if there is voltage drop concern due to the length of the circuit run, uh, then the lights may be fed using uh, phase to phase 208 volts. Otherwise, the phase to phase is usually reserved for large loads such as HVAC, elevators, large kitchen equipment, uh, things of that nature. 
So the final service we're going to talk about today is the uh, 480 volt 277 volt Y. So this is another Y connection. Uh, very common service. Uh, it's, this is used on larger size commercial projects or, indu or industrial projects. So this type of service must be used in conjunction with the previous uh, service that we had, 12208. So you can't have just a 480 277 uh, service throughout a building. You have to have that plus a 12208. And we accomplish this by uh, using strategically placed dry type transformers. And so that'll look like this guy here. This is a, a dry type transformer that you'll see uh, in electrical closets in a building that has 48277. So what this does is this will take the 480 uh, and step it down to 12208. And so there should be another panel usually located right next to this that'll be fed from this guy that'll be your 12208 for your receptacles and other 12208 volt loads that you need to serve. So you can either have 48277 loads or 12208 loads in, in this type of configuration or in a building that's fed this way. So this means uh, facilities of this type of distri distribution, there are usually two distribution systems or, uh, or can be. So the higher system, which is referred to as the primary uh, inside the building, and then uh, the dry type transformers will take this down to a secondary 208 120 volt system. So as before, the neutrals derive from a common connection between the transformers. Uh, just in this case, just the windings are winding counts a little bit different, so it gives us a little bit voltage on different voltage on the output. So here we have our common connection between the three transformers, gives us our neutral. If we were to take a meter and measure between each phase in that neutral, we're going to have 277 volts. And uh, we can do lighting at 277, that's not uncommon. But then between the phases, we're going to measure 480 volts. So again, that's reserved for the big loads, larger loads. So this service can also be delivered using three pole mount transformers, but more often the service is delivered underground through a pad mounted transformer uh, to the main distribution uh, switch gear. So in this type of scenario, the lighting again is typically uh, supplied with the 277 branch circuits, but again, larger loads are phase to phase 480. Also 480 is typically used to feed dry type transformers that step down to 12208. So while the incoming service is the starting point, it is also the demarcation point for the designer. So everything past this point is the responsibility of the uh, electrical engineering designer and must comply with the local code. So in almost all cases in the United States, the local code uh, is some version or variation of the National Electrical Code, which as we mentioned before is Article 70 of the NFPA. So, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, referring to that document quite a bit as we move forward. Just to give you an example of some details that uh, might be associated with electrical service, and oftentimes you'll see you know, pad mount transformer drawn on the riser diagram. They talk about the primary electrical service. We have to coordinate with the utility company, and then we have to provide the pad and the meter base uh, as shown uh, or per the local utility company's guidelines usually involves some type of duct bank. So we'll have duct bank details, uh, you know, running underground conduits between everything. Uh, we do need to make sure we have these plastic spacers because uh, when we fill this with concrete, these conduits are very prone to float or to move around. We want to keep them in place, keep the distance equal. You get another pad mount transformer with the uh, associated meter uh, detail. And then finally, on the single line, uh, you might see something like this, where you have your pad mount transformer and then your service running to your service disconnect. Uh, 